Have you ever been in the situation where you're going out tonight and you've got kind of an elegant dress or kind of a good look and then you think, I've got to have something to put over it. I need kind of a sweater. I need kind of a something or other that's going to be kind of warm and cuddly and I don't have one. What am I going to do? Linda, that sounds like me. It is something that I've heard you say, yes. True. And, and it is because you can't just put some old sweater on when, you, when you're sort of all Dull, dulled up. That's right. I'm an open canvas, so I need something, one well, of your patterns particularly. You will like this, because this is something I just can't stop making. It is the most goofy looking thing. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to solve your problem. It's sort of a piece of fabric that has a piece, now you put it on. Oh, does it matter which way I put it on? No, there's no up or down to it. It does not matter. And it just kind of drapes and just kind of keeps you warm and looks good and, and it's elegant. And fashionable. Yes, very, very. Is this a shrug? This is a shrug. I love yes, it. You got it. So this is actually what it looks like. It's one big piece of fabric like this on the fold. It's cut like this. You're going to put a seam there and a seam there. And you're going to put a band on it. And where's the neck opening? I would think it would be <laughs> over here. So the way you put it on is like this. We've got another one to show you because you have a twin. And you can make them shorter or longer or however you want. So let's show you another yes. one. So I do have a looks, twin. Yes, it looks <laughs> very well, familiar. Yeah, when you get a foot higher, you'll be the same. So, <laughs> so here we go. And you can see it just kind of drapes down in the back. And it just kind of does whatever. It's just kind of shruggy and just kind of fun. It is so, fun. So yeah. you can have it any length at the back. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can make it longer and make it shorter. So that's really what the whole the whole thing. So there's no rules. You know, when I've had you on before, we've, there's no yes. no rules in this game. Keeping it super simple. That's yeah. what I like. Yeah. Okay. So let's then bring on our next model because there's another one that I think you might be interested in. Ooh la la. Yeah. And of course, we did that skirt last season. So that, oh, was, a, that was a great one. So gorgeous. So this one's called a cocoon. And it's sort of along the same idea of what you've got on. Again, instant, quick and easy. Make it today, wear it today. So this is what it is. There's a scarf here. So I'll just put that down. And here's what this one does. So if you look at this, it's one piece of fabric. Oh. And it's just folded, sewn down the sides, and slashed up the middle. And again, surged along that edge, makes a nice finish on that. So this is not going to take too long. I think this is sort of not rocket science at all. And there you go. And again, one side sort of fits pretty well all. And there you go with your scarf. And you know we were making scarves a while back, too. So yes. Yeah. So this is impressive as well. Uh, yes, here it is. This is a wonderful fabric because it's something called beggar. And that means that it's two pieces of fabric. There's a base and there's all this ratty looking stuff on top. And it <laughs> comes like that. You don't have to make it. It's just kind of neat because that's the way it is. So here we've done the cocoon except longer. I love that. So you see, when you do it, you could make it short. You could make it long. You could make it wider. And the wider you make it, the longer your sleeves are going to be. Very so impressive. it is just a kind of a, again, something you can't absolutely go wrong. And when we made this, we, there was a piece left over. So we said, surge that. Well, you could call it a scarf or you could put it in your hair or you could do whatever you want with it. It's really just sort of a, a piece that goes with it. I see. And it, so, it looks stunning. Well, there you go. So that fabric is kind of neat. So it's, uh, it's called bigger. Now, w patterns for something like this? Well, let me, so we did, you've got this one. This is this I one that you've got on. I mean, that is just, that, you want to make it out of something soft, something cuddly, something with stretch to it, so that it doesn't, doesn't pull. You want it Certainly. something stretchy. So, so that's that one. But let's take this one, because I think you're going to like this. So we cut it out already. And again, cut it out of something kind of sheer, kind of soft, something that's not stiff. Something I was going to ask you about that. Something like that. So... And, of course, it's a pattern with the dimensions and everything that you can get, but you can start playing around because it's just a great big square. You're going to fold it in half, and you can see when you fold it in half, there's a slit in the middle of it. Very it's simple. Not all the way down, so that's important. And then put your edges together because, and there's no right or wrong to this fabric, so we really don't have to worry about whether it's, you know, which side you're going to do. So I know I'm going to do something kind of radical on this. You see, we could go and stitch this, but I want you to put it on right away. Oh. So why don't we just staple it? Staple, staple it? it. I, I know Linda, have you ever done this before, the stapling? Well, one other time on the show, and I caused quite a commotion. But, you know, I, I would sew this for real, but just, be, just for quick. I can staple. Yeah, you can staple. So let's go. Staple. And let's put about four of them in, something fast like that. little stapler. And don't sew it all, all the oh. way. Don't staple it all the way up. Right. The, Keep is it out for the arm? For your arm. Okay, yeah. I better leave a little more space So you can arm. do this. So let's take this one off. Oh, my goodness. And you and thought only a plastic surgeon uses staples. <laughs> no. Here we go. 
So here you go. Here See, this are. gives you a lot more See? idea. And I, I would be stapling it just to get an idea oh, of what it's going to look like. I mean, and vavoom, yeah. here I am, ready to go out. <laughs> exactly. You, I, I'd kind of like you to not just staple it, though, for going out, because it might catch on stuff. It's not the best. But, I mean, if you had to, you have to. But if you have to, you, you have, have to, to, and it works. Yeah, yeah. If you need a quick and uh, yeah. simple project. Exactly. So you could make a scarf to go with that. Oh, do you want to are we going to make a, little... a scarf? Sure, why not? If there's another piece of fabric left over, we could Is this it. where the sewing machine yes. is being used? Yes, I did All use right. the sewing machine on this one. So this is... Just a long piece of fabric. It's actually 60 inches wide doubled because we put a seam in it because it's just, you just want a nice long thing because we're going to sure. sort of foof it up. So shall I start it for you and then you can do sure, it? Sure, I'd love because to. Because you're, you got sewn the last time we were here. So. I'd love to try so to attempt. Normally a person would put a gathering thread all the way down and then just gather it up. Right. So, but that's too slow. Oh. So I've perfected a new technique and I think you're going to like it. And it's. Uh-oh, we need to have our foot going this way. So start in the middle and just start sewing and start shoving it. See, if you just shove it, shove it, shove it. And it's this called is called shove gathering. Shove gathering. Shove gathering. And it is shoving yeah, and it's shoving gathering. It. And yeah, it's just shoving it, shoving it, shoving it. So let's just take that one out. So have a look at that. What do you think? I can do this myself. You can do it. I can. And you can too. So don't go away. There's more good stuff coming up. Guests of our show stay at Travel Lodge. Nice rooms, great people. Models provided by Chan International. Number one in personal development training, modeling, and acting. started with the daytimer, just a book like this that was filled with stuff and then a few more books and then it became a coat under the brilliance of Vince Gaspari. So thank you for coming and oh, my showing pleasure. us. Thank you very much. Um, are you a sewer by nature? Is this something that you've done? Do you well, use I, a sewing machine? I do use a sewing machine oh, for mostly domestic projects, yeah. curtains, things like yeah, that, you yeah. know, mending. But uh, I had this sewing machine out and I was invited to participate in an exhibition for the Works Visual Arts Celebration. It was their 20th year uh -huh. and I was employed for 10 years there. So I had all of my day timers. And, I was and you're the kind of guy that doesn't do. throw anything out, obviously. No, so, like you know, old recycle, day -timers. absolutely. Lovely. So yeah. I decided, well, you know, I think that uh, I worked very hard while I was there and we identify ourselves with our work, so what better way to symbolize those years than to create an object that you would wear. You brilliant, know? brilliant. So I thought the man's historical overcoat when I was rummaging through Butterick patterns and yeah, thought, yeah. this is perfect, you know, yeah. it's a historical idea around charting your days and inscribing your way and everybody's got the Blackberry now, but the daytime is need a place. They do, and so what you did then is <laughs> all these old books of yours, you you pulled the pages out. I did, one by one. And, and then folded, folded them up so yes. that this top part was showing. Yep. Okay. Sewed them onto panels, a thin cotton panel, mm -hmm. and then just assembled them as according to the rules, to the pat butter pattern. You know? <laughs> There's no rules for sewing. Well, I guess not, yeah. But when you're working with a butter pattern, you have to follow well, it. Well, I mean, there are some know? seams. I mean, you've got some seams in here, and yeah. you've got a set in sleeve that's and the just, just and beautiful, the yeah. collar. Yeah. So are these dates in chronological order or anything? Or are well, no, they're not. And in fact, I really like the jumbled kind of effect that they leave. Beautiful. Okay, so so actual sewing of this, it gets it becomes quite thick. Well, I was doing a lot of it by hand. Okay. <clears throat> and I had an awl, mm -hmm. and then I used my domestic machine, and I went through about 150 needles <laughs> just trying to get through this. There are machines that do so wood, too. Yes. But, but anyway, this, this is sort of like wood, I would yeah, think. Yeah, once you fold it into those layers, it does become wood again. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, uh, I was working with a leather sewing machine to okay. be able to top stitch yeah. it, so it was yeah. really durable. And at that point, that was when it started to top stitch. That's when I realized I can't wear it anymore. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, let me see. Even in in the inside, I think I was looking and I saw that you've got some pictures and you've got your yes. signature. These were all loosely placed in each day timer. They were still there after all these years. So I yeah. decided, well, I can't leave them out. I have to incorporate them somehow. So they're sewn or collaged in. And uh, you know, decided that my signature showed up a few times. Have so that's to be in there. The yeah. Sign, the Traffic signature. ticket did I see? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All sorts Just of stuff that happened along the way. There. So <laughs> what a great memento of of your ten years of what a, a brilliant piece to do. Well, um, thank you. How, do those buttons actually work? 
Well, they go through the, of course, the eye holes there, but they do not work. Sorry okay, to report. Okay, they're okay. collaged on and then they're twist tied. Okay. In well, the that's eye. that makes sense. That, yeah. that does make sense. And you said this whole, the whole stand was something that you had. Yeah. So this I, is as kind a matter of fact, I have this uh, antique coat stand in my basement. In your I collection. Thought, well, there I, you go. It's yeah. got to go to You're mad at my own heart. I mean, don't throw away anything nope. and everything becomes reusable Absolutely. in some way. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that whole notion of the ready-made and, you know, some of the artists I look to are like Marcel Duchamp and, you know, taking things and denying their function, basically, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, playing with our our notions of what art, what constitutes yeah. art. Yeah. Well, I did the plastic bag on heard. this very show, so uh, I mean, this is not too. This is pretty. Mine's not quite that beautiful, oh, but wow. uh, I think it's great. So, thank you so thank much for you. sharing this with My us. My pleasure. All right. I really enjoy hearing from you, so keep those letters and emails and pictures coming. I'm going to share one with you right now, and it says, Hi, Linda. My co-teacher Pat and I met you at the Original Sewing and Quilt Expo in Cleveland, Ohio in March and told you about our developmental needs students making the world's easiest parka pattern. Well, that is one of my favorite patterns, and it's probably one for which I'm most proud. It is two pattern pieces. The front, the back, and the hood are all in one piece. And I'm telling you this, the sleeve is in one piece, so it's two pieces. You told us to let you know how it went, and maybe even get some pictures to you. Unfortunately, we are not able to release photos of the students themselves due to mental health regulations, but I have several wonderful photos of the parkas with their names embroidered on them. The students love them, and we will definitely use the pattern again. Thank you from Janice in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, here's pictures. Let's have a look at them. And that really warms my heart to see all of those wonderful jackets that that group made. And when I talked to Janice, I actually did talk to Janice in Cleveland, and she was so delighted with, and with the product. And the kids were so delighted, and they felt so good about themselves. I think that's so important. Sewing can make you feel so good. So here's another one. Hi, Linda. I love your show, and I love how you always take scraps from other garments and use them, but I've never seen you use men's garments before. My husband wears dress shirts six days a week, and when he decides they're no longer wearable, dead, he throws them away. I found a use for them, though. Good girl. Buttonholes are not what I love to do. It occurred to me that I could cut the man's shirt front, turn it upside down, and I would have the buttons and buttonholes finished for my next blouse project. There are always ways to use the tailoring areas of the entire shirt. The possibilities are endless. I now point out new shirts to my husband that I'd like to have, finished, have when he's finished. He's becoming defensive about his wardrobe. Thanks for all your ideas, Mass Vaccine from Washington. Well, thanks, Vaccine, and I hope that your husband doesn't get too silly with that. Thanks so much for sending the letters and keep them coming. that we spend a third of our life in bed. That's kind of an interesting fact, so I think I better find out more about how to do it in class. I mean, how to, what to wear, how's that? <laughs> and Jen Bones, it's great to have you with me. Thank you. And that's your specialty, is the whole laundry. It is, yeah. thank you. So what got you into laundry to begin with? Well, I teach pattern drafting, and after a couple of years of courses, some of my students, we were finished, and they were saying, okay, now we want to learn more. And I said, well, what, what is it that you'd like to learn? Yeah. And they said, we want to learn how to draft lingerie patterns, and we want to draft swimwear patterns. Okay. So that particular summer, I got together with some of my books and techniques and developed some drafting techniques mm. to develop mm. camisoles, panties, and simple tank suit. Okay, and they are simple and quick to make mm -hmm. and don't take a whole lot of fabric, so That's right. uh, it's good. That's that kind is. Of good. And not maybe a whole lot of people get to see them. No. So this is okay. But and it also is interesting that a lot of camisole designs and nighty designs really transfer into day wear just depending on the fabric that True you might enough. choose. True enough. So there's a lot of transfer of techniques and transfer yeah. of information yeah. between the two types of wardrobes sure. that we might have. And in this day and age, there's a lot of skin showing <laughs> lots of times, so... 
That's right. So whether it's a night or day, yeah, who knows? That's right. So what do you think is one of the things that you found works well with lingerie? Well, one of the traditional fabrics that people often think of when they think of lingerie is nylon trico. Mm -hmm. And nylon trico is a knit, mm -hmm. and it's great, but it's hot to wear, and yeah. it's not really a favorite of a lot of people as sure. we go forward and in our age because okay. it's too hot. Yeah. So a lot of fabrics that are wonderful are natural fibers. Sure. A lot of the uh, polyester fabrics that wick away our body perspiration, there's lots of different kinds of uh, microfiber polyesters too. Sure. Sure. Linens and silks and things are all mm -hmm. beautiful. So mm -hmm. what I really enjoy looking at our woven fabrics which don't stretch okay. but use the woven fabrics with the magic cut of bias okay. so the bias allows the garment to ease and stretch over the body you can have minimal uh, shaping and darting sometimes because the uh, ease of the bias will give you the fit and sure. the drape over sure. the body so let's talk about bias in okay. case somebody out there that doesn't know what bias for is. sure bias is interesting because in a lengthwise uh, line on a woven fabric we Which have an edge called a selvage yes. and it is referred to generally as the straight of grain mm -hmm. across we have cross grain mm -hmm. but if we were to fold the fabric on an exact 45 degree angle this line right here is called true bias and it has ease and Lots give of stretch. and in the same other direction as well mm -hmm. so so we can really take advantage of that direction for clothing. Yes, I think so much because okay. the straight, the cross has none. Yep. The straight has none. No. Nope. But that 45 degree angle is just. The it's key. great. Yep. So in this camisole, for example, this is a woven fabric with no stretch, mm -hmm. and yet cut in that bias direction. All of a sudden now I look at a camisole that has ease in the crosswise and in the lengthwise direction. So now that camisole will drape over the body nicely. And the pattern that allows that to happen is a pattern that looks like this. And I'll just turn it this way so the lengthwise grain line matches the selvage because that's what we always want to do when we lay out a pattern is that the lengthwise grain line needs to match the selvage edge. Parallel to. Yep. Parallel yeah, and yeah. even too in distance, so the sure. distance all the way down would match. Okay. So that's the simple shape of that camisole front. This happens to be the same pattern piece, just the pattern piece for the back with the same grain line indicating mm -hmm. the way it would be laid out. Mm -hmm. So many of the fabrics these days do have some lycra in them, but this is, right. if there is no lycra in them, this is the original oh. way, and this is a, a, you've got way more. Fabric choices. Yeah, and so many natural fibers we love wearing. Linens yeah, and yeah. silks and sure, cottons. Sure. Yeah. And textured fabrics. The jacket I'm wearing is cut on the bias. And there's the ease and the give. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's comfortable to yeah. wear. I've cut even cut the sleeves on the bias. Sure, so when sure. I reach forward, sure. I have no strain. I have yeah. no feeling like I can't move. Could we just decide to cut one of our favorite patterns on the bias? You could. The only thing that you, you'd have to be really careful of is just what we were looking at before, is making that grain line exactly 45 degree angle. Sure degree angle to sure. the straight of grain. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes the shaping is a bit different and on, on seam allowances sometimes the seams are easier to sew if they're a bit bigger. Okay. So instead of using 1.5 or 5 eighths of an inch you yeah. might use 2 centimeters or sure. 3 quarters of an sure. inch. Sure. But often the, the pieces can be similar if they're simple. Okay. Bias isn't fun with princess lines and all pieces. kinds no, of because stuff. Because then it's going to start to ripple. You're yeah. Have, yeah. So Simpler the pieces sure. the better. I'm all for that. You yeah, know all that. for simple. Yeah. Yeah. And then the only extra piece we like to mention is the strap because if you cut a strap on the bias. The straps are going to be uh, stretching and, and your neckline is going to be a little more sexy as the night goes on. Yes, so yeah. on this one, the strap is always better cut on the straight of grain because it will position well on the body, it'll sit, sure, it sews sure. well and has nice and shape. And I know that you've got another example over here which would be a good one to look at right mm -hmm. now because sometimes... Now in, in, yeah. the, in the example we looked at there, we looked at cutting on a single layer of fabric. We sure. cut out a whole camisole front and a whole camisole back. Now in this one, this is the jacket that I'm wearing and the pattern we need two backs and we need two fronts and then we need this little bib insert. Mm -hmm. So in this one I have a double layer of fabric and I follow the same principles. There's the straight of grain line marked on the back, the straight of grain line marked on the front, and then the straight of grain line marked on the bib. So these are cut on the bias mm -hmm. to give the same kind of effect In I In general, was you would say when you cut on the bias, it does take more fabric. That's one of the... Um, it does a little bit, but I always have an interesting comment too. When we lay out things on the straight of grain like this, uh -huh. we end up with rectangles left over. Yeah. When you lay out things on the bias and you cut them in this direction, you often end up with triangles left over. Okay, so your so yardage is a bit one more. Half of the other, sometimes so, yeah, yeah, on, sure. on narrower fabrics, 45 inch or 115 centimeter yeah, yeah, wide, sure. they definitely take a little bit more. Anything okay. on the 60 or the 150s, the yardages are often very comparable. Okay.
-hmm. Let's have a look at what these look like. Okay. I think that's the proof is Great. in the pudding. Let's have a look. Great. So we've got some girls wearing different garments cut on the bias. So this is the same as the gold camisole that we were just looking sure. at, uh, only cut in a nighty length. So you can see the ease and the give that that fabric has just draping on her body. Sure. And it falls nicely, fits over the bust nicely. There's no strain. Straps cut on straight of grain. And um, we're wearing a bra under here. So if you wanted to wear this as a, a little sundress, yes, it then work, it, yeah. could hide your, sure. it could hide your laundry underneath. And you've got this as a facing, so you'd cut the facing on the bias as mm -hmm. well. So sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank okay, you. that's good. All right, what else have we got? And now this one is 100% rayon, and the rayon was a border print. So because the bias direction uses the 45-degree the, um, mm -hmm. angle, the poor pattern of that fabric could be shown in a different way. Yeah. The pants are cut on cross grains so that the border could be used around the hem. Sure. And self-fabric for straps, again, sure. we use nice narrow lingerie elastic, elastic, elastic yeah, for yeah, the back. Yeah, good. And okay, so, that yeah, looks great. Good. Thank you. All right, so here's more bias. Now this is bias too, so across the hip and around the hem. Just always floats really nicely. Mm -hmm. It gives this a is, little bit of a flare, which is nice. It yeah. does, yeah. and you can often finish the edges of bias with just lace edge because there's yeah. no hemming okay. uh, as a thick edge. That's sure. good. It looks good. Yeah, okay, and elastic in the back one of this one as well. Okay. And then this is a, the pajama jacket, the same one that I'm wearing, but here's a really good example of where bias is different because we've taken the pants, which are cut in straight a grain, and so the fabric appears as a plaid, but in this one, the plaid is on the angle because the pieces have been cut on the sure, bias. Sure. And the when sleeves you on the bias, move in that, yeah, all that nice yeah. movement. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. All right, well, that gives good. me lots of things to think good. about, and that's talking about bias, and I think uh, bias is maybe the world's uh, least um, appreciated thing. Mm -hmm. it really we don't is. use it a lot yeah, in clothing yeah, and people yeah. fear it a little bit yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, and it's good. so it makes for a nice finish. Okay. Just a, a little detail to show on, on seaming, because our fabric has give in the way it lays out, mm -hmm. it's a good idea to put some give into seams. Okay. So okay. instead of stitching with a straight stitch, you may choose to stitch with a narrow fine zigzag sure. just to allow for some flexibility. Okay. okay, thank you, Jen. This You're was great. Welcome. This is great. So, Good. lingerie all the way. All the way. Okay, great. we're out of time. We've got to go, so see you next time. To receive the companion book for this series with all of the project details, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee or visit us on the web at www.mcpheeworkshop.com. Sponsored in part by Janome, quality sewing machines since 1921. And by Rowenta, the garment care experts, meeting the needs of the sewing enthusiasts for over 100 years with high-performance irons, steamers, steam generators, and ironing boards. And Wonderfill Specialty Threads. Thread for the way you sew. And by the Woolen Mill Store, your source for quality fabrics and more, featuring the largest selection of wool and wool blend. Yardage from Pendleton Woolen Mills. And by Horn of America. Experience quality, innovative ideas, and customer service. And Creative Festival. Bursting at the seams with hundreds of industry experts, conference classes, exhibits, and more. Experience creativity in the making.